Well, thank you for joining me today for another session of Enjoying Everyday Life. I want to remind you again that as a Christian, you are armed and dangerous. For two weeks, my guests and I have taught you about the authority of a Christian and the power in the Word of God and the name of Jesus. Today, I'm going to teach you why the blood of Jesus is so precious and how it applies to your life even 2,000 years after Jesus shed His blood for you. Joining me to discuss the power in the blood of Jesus is my special guest, Pastor Mark Hankins. Mark Hankins and his wife Trina answered the call of God on their lives over 30 years ago to enter full-time ministry. Jesus is alive that He is Lord and you are in Him and He is in you. And many of his nine books have been translated into several languages. Mark teaches people who they are and what they have through the Holy Spirit in Christ. Well, Mark, thank you for being with us today. Glad to be back. You know, God put it on my heart a while back that I needed to teach a new series on the authority of the believer. I know for me, I was a Christian for a long time before I realized that, that I had any real authority. I just thought I had to just put up with whatever came by in mm -hmm. life. And I felt like we needed to kind of get back to some of the basics for a little bit on just the power that's in the Word, the power that's in the name, yeah. the power that's in the blood of Jesus. And so today we're going to talk about why the blood of Jesus is so important as a central theme of our Christianity. So tell us about it. You know, there's really so much in the Bible about the, the importance of just the blood. Mm -hmm. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, much is made of the blood. Mm -hmm. You can see in the New Testament that when Jesus shed his blood, Hebrews 9, 12 says that he took his blood into the heavenly holy of holies and he obtained eternal redemption for us. So everything Jesus did, he did it for us right. and is set to the credit of our account that it belongs to us. So with his blood, he purchased our eternal redemption right. with his blood. It makes it powerful. The blood is powerful in heaven, and the blood is powerful in the earth. The blood is powerful against the devil. Yes. The blood is powerful to give us access to the Holy of Holies and the very presence of God. One of the things that I like to think about concerning the blood of Jesus that kind of helps bring it to a practical level for me is that the Bible says that the life is in the blood. Mm -hmm. We know that once a person loses their blood, yeah. They lose their life. They can't stay alive anymore. Mm -hmm. And the Bible also teaches us that, that only life will swallow up death. Absolutely. That death is swallowed up in life. Mm -hmm. So I like to think about the fact that if, if the life is in the blood, which it says even in the Old Testament, that when Jesus poured his blood out and mm -hmm. we put our faith in that blood, that that's like putting our faith in a life that is now strong enough to swallow up anything that resembles or partakes of death in our life. And that's not just like laying down and dying, but it's, it's disease, misery, depression, all these different mm -hmm. things that the enemy uses to try to make us miserable. And the fact is, the devil is afraid of the blood. Absolutely. <laughs> he might not be afraid of me or you, but he is yeah. afraid of the blood. You know, and, and Revelation 12, 11 says that they overcame Satan through the blood of the Lamb and through the word of their testimony. So the blood of Jesus has power to stop the devil. When we as believers learn how to plead the blood or to apply the blood right. of Jesus by faith, then that stops the devil. And the Holy Spirit is constantly reminding us to use our authority and to apply that blood by faith over our families, over our minds, over our future, over our possessions, over our children. The blood of Jesus has so many applications because it contains everything that's in Christ and everything God's done for us in that's Him. That's right. And, you know, the blood is powerful, but it's when we put our faith mm -hmm. in that shed blood yeah. that it becomes really powerful. And so for me to, to apply the blood of Jesus by faith over my children, that's like a covering over their lives that when the devil sees that covering, then he has to back off. Absolutely. It's all the way from Exodus chapter 3, you know, where, where Moses and comes to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he says, you take the blood and apply it over the doorpost of your house. Yes. So the blood has to be applied. Right. In the Old Testament, it was literally applied even over the doorpost of their house so that the destruction could not get into their house. But it had to be applied. 
In the New Testament, that blood is applied by faith. Yes. And faith, I like to say it this way, there is no such thing as ignorant faith. <laughs> so faith begins when you know what the blood of Jesus has done for you. And then there's no such thing as silent faith. Right. The moment you know what the blood has done for you, then you lift your voice in faith with great expectation, with great confidence that Jesus has already taken care Amen. of it and the enemy is stopped. Well, you know, the Bible says that we've been purchased with a price, with a preciousness. Mm -hmm. And that price that we have been purchased with is that pure, sinless, innocent blood of Jesus Christ. And so when you think about that, that God let his son go through that terrible death on the cross because he loved you so much mm -hmm. that he was willing to pay that price. Yes. You have been purchased with a preciousness. And so the Bible says you're not your own. Absolutely. You've been bought with a price. And so we belong to God. We belong to him. And so we can tell the <laughs> devil no trespassing. That's right. That we belong to Jesus. And he, the, the blood of Jesus contains the measure of God's love for us. Yes. The blood of Jesus contains the measure of the standing that Jesus has produced for us with God. And so uh, a few years ago, I got a larger life insurance policy. <laughs> and they said, well, you know, we're not going to give you a life insurance policy this large without uh, taking your blood. <laughs> so they took my blood out of this arm and they kept taking blood. And then they sent my blood off to a laboratory, put it under a high-powered microscope because they want to find out what's in my blood because my blood will tell a lot about me. That's right. And so I was surprised because after a few days, they actually sent me a printout of everything that was in my blood to determine how healthy I was. And I thought, that's amazing. Before they would give me the life insurance policy, they had to examine my blood then they sent me a printout of all the ingredients that were in my blood. And I thought, that's amazing because after Jesus died and arose from the dead, God took his blood into the heavenly laboratory, put it under a high-powered microscope, and then he gave us a printout of everything that's in that blood. That means there's righteousness in that blood. There's peace in that blood. There's joy in that blood. There's more than just yeah. forgiveness. Everything Christ has done is in his blood, and we've got the printout. So faith just simply examines the scriptures, finds out what God says is in the blood, right. and then pleads or applies that blood to our own lives. We might say that this wonderful book full of God's word is our life insurance policy. It's our policy, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because Jesus said, my words, they are spirit. Mm-hmm and they are life. They are life. And so when we apply the blood, and I think that term plead the blood is perhaps a little bit more of an older Pentecostal term that a lot of people watching today might not really connect yeah. with. And so I want to make sure they understand that we apply that blood yeah. by faith, once again, using that example of how the Israelites yeah. were told by God mm -hmm. to apply the blood to the sides and the top of the doors, mm -hmm. and that when the angel of death came by, everybody else was going to, their firstborn was going to get killed, yeah. but he said, I will pass over you. When I see the blood. When I see the blood. Must be applied. I will pass over you. But that blood had to be applied. Yeah. Well, you know, even when you think about the old covenant and all the blood sacrifices, the animal sacrifices, mm -hmm. but now we have one final sacrifice yeah good for all times, yeah. that by his blood, yeah. <laughs> we've been forever and completely cleansed. Absolutely. And by that blood, we can enter in boldly, boldly, boldly yeah. before the throne of God and let him know what we need and repent of our sins and, yeah. and have great fellowship and communion with him. It's just almost too good to believe, isn't yeah. it? Uh, Jesus did the hard part. Yeah. And all you and I do is simply believe and apply by faith. Actually, you know, my mama used to do this all the time. Yeah. My mama would always say, I plead the blood of yeah, Jesus. Right. I plead the blood of Jesus. One time I brought home a girlfriend from high school, and my mama didn't really think she was for me. <laughs> she was a little too sassy, I guess. Mama said, I plead the blood of Jesus. And, and then she said, now, Mark, you may get what you want, but you may not want what you get. Yeah. So she said, I plead the blood of Jesus even against my own desires <laughs> as a child, as a young man. And so when she said, I plead the blood, I thought, what is she doing? <laughs> well, the word plead is really a legal term. Yeah. 
that simply means that, that the Holy Spirit is your advocate. That's good. He's your lawyer. So the Holy Spirit will teach you and show you how to plead. Right. Because we know all of us are guilty. Oh, well, that's good to have that understanding. <laughs> all have sinned. Yeah. We're all guilty. But the blood speaks of the mercy of God. Yes. So how do you plead? Well, the Holy Spirit will say, look, don't talk about yourself right now. Don't talk about what you did or don't talk about what you didn't do. Plead the blood. So mama would plead the blood. And when she would plead the blood, then something would change because whatever <laughs> schemes the devil was planning to do were stopped. You know, my mama always used this scripture in Luke 22 and verse 31, 32, where uh, Jesus talked to Simon Peter and she said this scripture to me. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. I always say that makes you shredded wheat. But you can see that, that Jesus actually said there is a devil, and he has desired to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But Jesus said, he will not have you because I have prayed for you. And when you are changed, God's going to use you to strengthen the brethren. That's so good. And so mama would take the blood and apply it by faith, and then she would say, no matter what Satan has desired to do, he is not going to have you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. That's so good. Well, we're going to come right back in just a minute. It's time for a break. So please stay with us because we have a lot more right after this. Well, welcome back. Pastor Mark Hankins is with me, and we're talking about the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Well, Mark, there's so many different things that you can talk about concerning the blood of Jesus, but why don't you tell us a little bit about blood covenant in the Old Testament and how important that was, and it might help people understand better the blood covenant that we now have with God through the blood of Christ. Well, actually, the Bible's made up of uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Both of those words literally mean a covenant. Right. And so the word covenant itself simply means to cut until the blood flows. So anytime God is talking, He's talking covenant. Mm -hmm. So He says in Psalms, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the word that has come out of my mouth. So the word of God is guaranteed by the blood of Jesus. Actually, it's written in blood. Matter of fact, every time you speak the word, there's blood on your voice mm -hmm. because that word contains the covenant that God made with us. The first covenant with God made with Abraham, Abraham was standing in the middle of a sacrifice of blood. Yeah, and an God, animal literally had been cut down the cut, middle and he was standing He was in standing it. in that blood and God said, this is my covenant with you. In other words, Abraham could have great confidence that God would never change his mind, that his word would be unchanging. So that our faith comes from such a confidence that God said, my word is forever settled in heaven, that he never changes his mind. So in the Old Testament, there's a lot of applications of the blood that any time they would worship, to me it's interesting because Hebrews chapter 9 tells about when Moses, when they had church, if you will, that Moses would come in and take blood and sprinkle it on the book he would sprinkle it on the podium, sprinkle it on the vessels, and then it says he would sprinkle it on all the people. Right. So you can imagine going to church and having somebody <laughs> slinging blood on you. Well, why did he do that? Because it is the blood that is the guarantee or the seal of God's word and God's will. One of my favorite scriptures there is Hebrews 13, 20 and 21, where it says, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, yeah. God is working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. The Amplified Bible says he's equipping you with everything you need to do his will. So God literally guarantees his will through the precious blood of Jesus and that covenant that God made a covenant. So in the Old Testament, they sprinkled blood literally. So if you went to church, you may come out with splashes of blood on you. But today in the New Testament, it says that we have faith in his blood. So anytime we're speaking and declaring and pleading the blood of Jesus, literally that blood is getting on us. And we apply that blood and the devil will come around and say, oh, they got blood on them. Leave them alone. Yeah, that's right. And yet that blood also grants us access to the very presence of God and gives us boldness to come to the mercy seat because of the blood of Jesus. Under the, under the Old Testament, in the Old Testament or the Old Covenant, uh, people would come would make covenants. And I love what David said 
after Saul and Jonathan had died. Mm -hmm. And Jonathan and David were covenant friends. Mm -hmm. They had a covenant together. Mm -hmm. And David went and said, Is there not anyone left of Jonathan and Saul's house to whom I might show mercy yeah. for Jonathan's sake? For Jonathan's sake. For Jonathan's sake. Yeah. So here he is. For the sake of his covenant friend, he's wanting to be merciful to his relatives. Yeah. And really the connotation there is God is crying out and saying, is there anyone to whom I might show mercy for Jesus' sake? Absolutely. <laughs> and the story of Mephibosheth is he's out there crippled, living in, the, in Lodibar, right. which was a wilderness place. And uh, David literally sent people to bring him out of that place of, of despair, bring him to the king's house. He said, and you're going to eat at my table. For right. the rest of your life, I'm going to take care of you. Not because of anything Mephibosheth did, but because of a blood covenant. That's the greatest picture of what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. And actually the part I really like in 2 Samuel 9 is it says that he ate at the king's table always, even though he was lame yeah. in both feet. <laughs> yeah. So even though we don't manifest perfection, yeah. even though we've got a few weaknesses and yeah. things that are wrong with us. We're lame. Yeah. You know, we're lame, so to speak. Yeah, sure. We still, through the blood of Jesus, through, the blood of Jesus. through that cleansing power yeah. of the blood of Jesus, can eat at the king's table. Yeah. We can reign as kings and priests. Absolutely. We don't have to let the devil walk all over us. Yeah. We do have an enemy, Mark. Yeah. Satan is our enemy. The thief yeah. comes only mm -hmm. to kill, steal, and destroy. But yeah. Jesus said, I came. Yeah that you might have and enjoy your life yes. and have it in abundance to Absolutely. the full until it overflows. Even when we have failed, even when we have been defeated, we can come right back and the Holy Spirit's our comforter. He's our helper. He's the lifting power of the body of Christ. So the Holy Spirit will never just push you down. The Holy Spirit says, take the blood, plead the blood. The reason you plead the blood, he's your advocate. And he's planning on winning your case. That's right. But we can't win your case with your performance. Right. But we can win the case with what Jesus has done because his blood carries his mercy, That's his right. victory, his righteousness. So the blood of Jesus will stop the devil. I think David walked in that blood covenant. And David was such a champion yeah. because he understood the blood covenant. And his mighty men, became tremendous champions because David there in the cave of Adullam, he must have taught them how to have faith in that covenant. Right. And they were distressed, discontent, and in debt, but they came out of that cave, and it says they became champions. Just one of David's mighty men. I love the story where it says that he took a sword and held it in his hand, <laughs> and it said he fought over a field of beans. <laughs> And it said he was not going to let the enemy have his beans. And he stood there, the scripture says, until that sword was stuck in his hand and they had to pry it out of his hand. And the reason he's fighting over those beans, I said, Lord, why is he fighting over those beans? I'm, I'm not going to fight over no beans. And the Lord said, because if you let the devil have your beans, it won't be long. He'll be coming after your taco, your enchilada, and your whole Mexican dinner. So you got to stop the devil when he's just coming after your beans. So the sword that we have, the weapon, is the blood of Jesus. That's good. And if we'll hold fast to our confession of faith, then we can tell the devil, you're not getting my joy, you're not getting my yes. peace, you're not getting my blessing, you're not getting anything, not because of me, but because of what Jesus paid. That reminds me of what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5. It talks about resisting the devil at his onset. Mm -hmm. And that's like, don't let him get your beans, yeah. <laughs> and then he can't get to the rest of everything. Yeah. And that's such a good thing for people to learn. As you know, I always tell people, don't wait till you're five days sunk in a pit of yeah. depression and it's going to take a truckload full of Christians and three preachers to come yeah. and get you back <laughs> yeah. in life again. Yeah. The minute that you start to feel down, yeah. the minute yeah. that you start to feel uh, negative or you feel your spirit yeah. sinking or the minute you start to feel uh. hopeless, that's when you say, yeah. devil, I rebuke you, I resist you, Absolutely. and I remind mm. you of the blood of Jesus mm. that has washed me mm -hmm. and the victory that I have because of my covenant with God and yeah. I will not bow down to you. Yeah, and you, you plead the blood even against your own mind right. and your own thoughts. Sometimes we defeat ourselves. 
with self-condemnation and we think we don't have and we've failed. But if we plead the blood against our own disposition, against our own attitude and say, I believe God, that God will always give us fighting words. The word of God gives us fighting words against the enemy. And so uh, what the Lord gave me in Trina years ago was we were facing a tremendous difficulty that either we're going to quit and give up, we're going to go under. And the Holy Spirit just inspired these words to my wife. And, and the Holy Spirit said, say this, God is on my side, <laughs> for the blood is applied. Yeah. Every need shall be supplied. Nothing shall be denied. So I enter into rest. I know I'm blessed. <laughs> I have passed the test, and I will get God's best. Good. So no matter how we would feel, we'd say, God's on my side <laughs> because the blood is applied. Then we receive mercy. That's you so don't good. get what you got coming to you. You get the mercy of God because of the blood of Jesus. The power that's in the word of God, that's our two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. We need to remember the power that's in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when we pray in that name, we're not presenting to God what we are, but we're presenting to God everything that Jesus is. And when we apply that blood by faith, Mm -hmm. I believe that the devil has to run away from that. He has to look away from that because it was the blood of Jesus Christ that defeated him And as long as we have confidence and faith in that blood, he remains a defeated foe in our life. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Well, Mark, thank you for being with us today. After the break, I want to pray for you to receive and use your God-given authority in your everyday life. 